Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome students if you remember in the last uh, few classes we have been discussing the particle in a box problem so far we have formulated the problem we have seen how we could solve the particle in a box problem and then we also have obtained the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian operator for this system. We have also analyzed the eigenvalues, the energy spectrum, the different properties of the eigenfunctions and we also looked at the average property or the expectation value of position operator. In today's class, we will continue our discussion and we will use the eigenfunctions that we have uh, obtained to di discover different properties of this uh, system. The first thing that we are going to discuss today is the average value or the expectation value of momentum operator for this particle in a box problem. When I say uh, expectation value, of course, we know that uh, we have to, so now we are going to discuss the expectation value of the uh, expectation value of the momentum operator. So, when I say expectation value of the momentum operator, I mean uh, I have to evaluate the integral this is the operator form of the momentum operator and these are the wave functions. The integration limit as you remember the particle can in the x, x axis is defined from minus infinite to plus infinite, but then we have also mentioned that be, between 0 and L the particle experiences 0 potential outside this box particle experiences infinite potential outside the box the wave function vanishes. So, therefore, our integration limit we can set as 0 to L. If you remember the wave function. Uh, the functional form of the wave function was under square root 2 by L and a sine function. So, I am first writing the uh, normalization constant 2 by L under square root, but I have psi n star and psi n. So, both combined. So, therefore, the square root is missing and I have sin n pi x by L and I have this operator minus i h bar d by d x and I now have to solve this uh, integral. I see 2 by L and then I see that this minus i h bar I can bring out of the integration and then I look at the integral. So, I have a sine function here and a differentiation of uh, a, a sine function with respect to x. When I differentiate this function I have n pi by L which comes out and I have I am left with a cosine function. Okay. So, this constant I am bring I will bring out and then I am left with a sine function and a cosine function. I can simplify these two functions by two sin theta cos theta as sin two theta, and when I integrate this function, finally I have this uh, constants outside. So I'll I'll bring them later. Let me see what I get here. In the limit zero to L. So if you see, when I use x as L, so L L cancel out, and I am left with cos cosine of two n pi, which is one. And when I put x as 0, that also makes cos 0 as 1. So, therefore, this function turns out to be 0. 
and as a whole when I multiply this 0 with this constant I get 0. What I see here that the expectation value of momentum operator is, is 0. As you already know from the results of the expectation value of position operator, the expectation value represents the average value of the momentum. Now, when I see an average value of 0 for linear momentum, this indicates that an, in on average the particle actually has no speed or no momentum. So, as if the particle is static. This result also has a deeper meaning if we uh, analyze it a little further. If you see this the wave function that we had as the uh, from the uh, particle in a box problem, I am writing only the wave function in without the uh, normalization constant. This wave function is not an eigen function of momentum operator. So, if you remember the momentum operator is minus i h bar d by d x. So, when I apply momentum operator on this eigen function uh, on this function I get a cosine function. So, when I do not get back this function that I am acting on. So, this is not an eigen function for this operator that we already know. So, therefore, when I measure momentum linear momentum for this state function I am not going to have a definite value rather I will have a linear uh, super uh, a linear combination of uh, one uh, several uh, possible values. But I am going to uh, rewrite this state function in a slightly different way. So, I would use sin n pi x divided by L I can write it as e to the power i n pi x by L minus sorry this is plus i minus e to the power minus n pi x by L divided by 2 i. So, this simply converts a sine function expresses a sine function in terms of an ex, uh, a C 2 exponential function sin theta equals e to the power i theta minus e to the power minus i theta divided by 2 i. Now, I see this wave function this state function sin n pi x has two parts one is e to the power plus i n pi x by L another is e to the power minus i n pi x. If you observe carefully these these two exponential functions are actually eigen functions of the linear momentum operator that we can show without any uh, problem. So, I see I minus i h bar d by d x this is the linear momentum operator and when I apply it on i n pi x by L what do I get. So, minus i h bar remain when I differentiate this exponential function with respect to x I get i n pi divided by L e to the power i n pi x by L. I can simplify it by minus i into i as plus 1. So, I have n h bar pi divided by L e to the power i n pi x by L. So, what I see here is that this function is actually an eigen function of this linear momentum operator with an eigen value of n h bar pi divided by L. I can also do the same thing for the other component e to the power minus i n pi x by L and I would get the eigen value as Now, when you look at this result, we see that all the sine function is actually not an eigen function of the linear momentum operator, but I can express this sine function in terms of two exponential uh, functions and each of these functions are actually eigen function of linear momentum operator. And what are the corresponding eigen values? So, when I have this function as an eigen function, the eigen value is n h bar pi divided by L and when I have this as the eigen function, the eigen value is minus n h bar n h bar pi divided by L. Now, when you look at these two eigen values, this they are simply negative of each other. What does that rep, uh, mean? That when I have the state function expressed in terms of a sine function, this has two components one component is an eigen function of linear momentum operator with an eigen value or the observable of the linear momentum or the linear momentum itself is plus n h bar pi 
divided by L and the other component represents the negative of its negative of, of this eigenvalue. So, in other words when I express the state from uh, the particle in a box state function it has got two components as lin as eigenfunction of the linear momentum operator one goes left hand side another goes right hand side of the box. So, on average when you take both the components the average expectation value of the linear momentum turns out to be 0. So, the result that we saw that if the expectation value of linear momentum operator for a particle in a box problem is 0 this makes perfect sense. Uh, please note that the expectation value of this linear momentum operator for the uh, particle in a box problem does not the expectation value does not depend on which func state function I am considering does not matter which what value of n I am considering the expectation value is always going to be 0. The way just, just to remind you in the similar way we also saw for the expectation value of the position operator that does not matter which state function I am considering whether n is 1 or n is 2 or n is 3 or n is 4 it does not matter the expectation value of the position operator was always L by 2 and now we saw the expectation value of the uh, linear momentum operator is always uh, 0. So, it is it is very important to understand what the expectation value or the average value uh, represent as as opposed to the eigenvalue of a particular state. In the next we actually would go beyond the particle in a box and we would look at a particular uh, solution a uh, particular problem which goes by the name free particle. What do we mean by free particle? If you remember the particle in a box experienced 0 potential within the box and outside the box it experienced infinite potential. But in as a free particle when we say free particle we mean that the particle experiences no external potential whatsoever all through the space. So, in other words I have if this is my x axis it goes from minus infinite to plus infinite over 0. So, the potential energy operator is 0 throughout. So, we said that potential energy is 0, the kinetic energy, so this is a free particle of mass m. So, the kinetic energy is minus a square by 2 m d square by d x square. So, again we are considering uh, the moment of the particle along one dimension uh, only along one dimension. So, this is my kinetic energy, this is the potential energy. So, I can write down the Schrodinger equation as uh, where the Hamiltonian is sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy and the Schrodinger equation is h psi equals e psi. When I use this form of the operators I see plus the potential energy is 0. So, therefore, as the potential energy is 0 and then I have the right hand side E psi. I can rearrange this we have already seen this equation a few times. So, I hope you are familiar with uh, this equation by now. I rearrange this equation to write this uh, homogeneous uh, second order differential equation. And we in the previous classes we also have discussed the solution of this particular uh, differential equation. So, the solution if you remember would be uh, we will have two uh, exponential functions c 1 e to the power e plus c 2 e to the power minus i so the general solution of this function is 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 shown here i have one 
uh, exponential uh, function with plus exponent, another with, with minus uh, exponent. Now, this is, this is the general solution. If you remember our discussion on particle in a box problem, from here we started and then we said that okay, uh, at the, we would impose some boundary condition in the particle in a box problem, because in a particle in a box problem, we had the particle experiencing different potential at different region. So, at the interface of the two regions, if you remember we called region 1 and region 2 and region 3, at the interface, interface of region 1 and 2 and in the, at the interface of regions 2 and 3 the wave function must be continuous. That was the boundary condition that uh, we imposed for particle in a box problem. However, when we have a free particle, it experiences no potential all along uh, at all values of x. So, therefore, there is no boundary condition that we uh, the kind of boundary condition that we saw in the previous problem is not there. But to have an acceptable wave function, we can have we can impose one particular condition on this wave function that this wave function should remain finite at all places. So, even when x goes to plus infinite or minus infinite, the wave function should not go, should not become infinite. So, the wave function should remain finite even when our variable x becomes plus infinite or minus infinite. So, this is the condition that we can impose on our uh, problem. All right. So, if we have this in this uh, condition uh, in mind, let us look at this uh, solution uh, a little more. We continue our discussion in this uh, here. So, suppose we consider a case where E is less than 0, that means negative values of energy. When I have E equals E is greater less than equal to 0, then I will what happens to this value? Since E is negative, the negative quantity under square root will give me an imaginary root. So, I have E and I can write this as absolute value of E, because I have taken out the minus side minus sign of the, uh, the energy value when E is, is negative. Uh, to the outside of the square root and what I am left with is simply. So, for negative value of E, I can write down this wave function as something like this e to the power. So, Now, let us analyze these two, these two functions. Suppose x goes to plus infinite. When x goes to plus infinite, you see because what happens to this term? x is very large, but we, I have a negative sign here. So, therefore, this term becomes very small. So, when x goes to infinite, this term would tend to be become 0, very small, it would go to 0. So, therefore, this does not create problem for me at x equals plus infinite. Let us look at this function. When x goes to plus infinite, this x becomes very large and e to the power this large uh, value becomes extremely large going towards infinite. So, when x goes to infinite, this particular term also becomes infinite. But we know that we have a condition to fulfill that when x goes to infinite, the wave function should remain finite. To keep the wave function finite, we have to do something. What can we do about it? So, we have to say that this solution would not be acceptable at x equals plus infinite. And to do that, we can simply say when x goes to infinite, c 2 should become 0. So, if c 2 the coefficient for this function is 0, so that means if the contribution of this function is not there and we are happy. Let us look at the other end, when x goes to minus infinite. When x goes to minus infinite, uh, let us first look at this term. When x is minus infinite, I have no problem here because this is x is minus. So, then the e to the power uh, large minus si, uh, 
quantity so which will tend to go to 0 and this function is fine this this is this function will not become infinite at x equals minus infinite now let us look at the first function uh, the first function when x equals minus infinite will become e to the power the x, a large positive quantity which will become infinite when x goes to infinite. So, therefore, at x equals minus infinite I have problem with this term. So, to solve this problem I will have to impose a condition that c 1 is 0 at x equals minus infinite. Now, considering the fact that at plus infinite I have c I should make c 2 is 0 at minus infinite I must make c 1 equals 0 since I have a free particle going from minus infinite to plus infinite and I am going to get one state function for the entire system. So, when I put c 1 0 c 2 0 the wave function itself becomes 0. So, what it tells? So, the wave function is 0 so therefore, the probability density is 0 that means the particle does not exist. So, what does not exist is that negative solution negative value of energies are not allowed. So, this gives us uh, the um, for free particle that only E equal greater than or equal to 0 values are allowed. The free particle cannot have negative uh, energy. It can have any energy which is greater than or equal to 0. Now, at this point we would, act, we would uh, spend some time in understanding uh, the solutions that, that we obtain. So, one particular condition uh, one particular thing that you um, should see that when I put E greater than or equal to 0, the, the wave function make is, is ensured that it will not become infinite at x equals plus infinite or minus infinite because in that case it would become e to the power. So, when e is positive or e is 0. So, this is this quantity is real overall this quantity is Im imaginary and e to the power plus i theta or e to the power minus i theta can be expressed in terms of a cosine theta and sin theta term. And when I express something in cosine theta and sin theta term the advantage is that the co cosine function and sin function are bound between plus 1 or minus 1. So, therefore, they can they would never become infinite. So, my wave function for E greater than or equal to 0 remains finite even at x equals x goes to plus infinite or minus infinite. But this does not solve all my problems because when the wave function is finite even when x is uh, uh, x, x is uh, infinite that means that I can never integrate this function or this function is not square integrable. So, if I am not able to square integrate this function that means, I cannot normalize this function if and if I cannot normalize this function. So, C 1 and C 2 are hard to get. So, the free particle solutions are the allowed solutions are E greater than equal to 0 and these functions are not normalizable. and they are also not quantized because what so far we have no boundary condition that which existed like uh, the way it existed in particle in a box that gave us a discrete solution here the there is no such boundary condition to make the energy levels discrete. So, therefore, all, all positive uh, ener energy values are allowed. So, therefore, they are not quantized and they are not normalizable, uh, but you would you would if you remember our previous discussion if the wave function is not normalizable then we would not call it a well behaved function or an acceptable function, but this problem does not arise here because uh, strictly speaking that there, there, there exists no free particle. You can never have a particle which is devoid of any interaction with everything else. It is a high, uh, it is an ideal uh, problem. In reality, however, if you can um, uh, you, you can uh, get a somewhat a free particle. Uh, in that case, you can normalize it within the experimental conditions. Uh, when I say free particle, it is perhaps uh, uh, important to give you some idea about what we, uh, what is what what physical uh, system can 
uh, represent a free particle, then uh, the answer to that question is that you have seen photoelectron uh, experiment. So, when you uh, uh, when you shine irradiation on a, on, a, on a system, then you eject a photoelectron. That photoelectron which is which is now outside the influence of the molecular environment or the uh, nuclear environment of the molecule is a, a, an example of a free particle, is an example of this, uh, this uh, free particle. So, therefore, uh, in, in such a case when we have uh, when we have a, a, a free particle, although we cannot actually normalize this system, but still uh, the, solu the solutions uh, are there. Uh, so, in, the, in, this, in this class so far what we have done is that we have discussed particle in a box problem and a free particle problem. Uh, in, in case of particle in a box problem, all our wave functions are were bound solutions. For example, if you remember the, the solution of particle in a box problem, all our wave functions were bound. That means, they were all present within the dimension of the box, but in case of a free particle, the free particle since the allowed functions are all e greater than or equal to 0 and they are sum of a cosine and sine function. So, they are found everywhere. So, they can be seen from minus infinite to plus infinite. So, therefore, they are they represent what we call on unbound states. The free particle solutions are unbound states, where the, whereas the particle in a one dimensional box uh, solutions they represented all uh, bound state. Uh, in between the bound state and non bound state problem, uh, there exist the real systems. For example, oh, it is very diff uh, when we say that the particle experiences infinite potential, that means the molecule is extremely stable, the electron never leaves the molecule. When you say the free particle, that means the electron has already left the molecule. But most interesting part of the uh, story lies in, in, the, uh, in the intermediate case, where the pa particle or the electron experiences not infinite, rather a finite potential. All, if you rem remember all your chemical reactions that you have studied, wh when uh, uh, when there is an electrophilic attack or a nucleophilic attack, the, when you have reactive molecules, that means the electrons are willing to come out of the nuclear environment and do the reactions, right? So in those cases, the electrons do not experience infinite potential, nor do they experience no potential. Rather, they actually f experience a finite potential. So there exists uh, methods to solve particle confined to a finite potential energy uh, barrier. So, they are called parti particle in square well, but for uh, this, this, this particular topic lies beyond the scope of our discussion. Uh, but when you uh, when we take particle in a uh, infinite uh, potential or part a free particle and particle in a finite wall, we actually cover the entire range of uh, potentials that the electron can experience. Thank you very much.